If you want to execute a background job repeatedly, should you use a timer or a while? What is the difference? The difference is that if you want to make sure that you only execute one instance at the same time of the algorithm, you should use a while. On the other hand, if you want to make sure that you always execute the same algorithm at intervals, even though you may end up executing several instances at the same time, you should use a timer. Let's see that. We are here in Visual Studio. I just created a new Web API application. And what I will do is that I will create two background jobs, one that uses a while and another one that uses a timer. And we're going to see that indeed, we can be sure that with the while implementation, we are only going to have one instance being executed at the same time. So let's come here. Let me create the while implementation of my background job. So background job with while. After that, we're going to create the timer implementation, but let's start with a while. All right, so as we saw in a previous video, we're going to inherit from the background service abstract class. So let me implement that abstract class. And let me say here async. And what I will do is that I will create a private field here. So private in instances being executed, I'll say zero. Then in here, I will use a while, a stopping token. We already saw this in a previous video. And now here I will say instances being executed. I will add one. I will put here a console write line while a starting execution task being executed. And here we have the number of tasks being executed. Then we're going to simulate a long task. So simulating a long task await as delay 10 seconds. After that, we're going to write on the console the current time and executing the background job. And finally, let me say here, instances being executed and we're going to subtract one from it and of course we're going to say await as delay we're going to wait two seconds between the executions of the instances of the background job and also i'm going to pass the cancellation token again all of these are stuff that we saw in previous videos all right so now we're ready to test let's make sure that indeed we can only execute one instance of this background job and when i say instance of the background job what I mean is that this code that I have here will only be executed one at a time. All right, so let's come here and let me say builder services at hosted service and I'll say background job with while. All right, so control F5, let's execute this and find out if indeed we only have one instance of our job being executed. Let me come here to get my console. All right, so let me put this back here. Task being executed one, as you can see here, we only have one task being executed. Let's wait a moment, a few moments, and we have 8, 14, 23, remember that please. And let's see that we indeed again have only one task being executed at the same time. That is great, that is fine. But notice something, and that is that depending on how long the task takes to be executed, the difference between these times may vary. For example, these are not being executed at an interval of two seconds, as I may have expected from this code that I have here. But what happens is that we wait 10 seconds because the task takes 10 seconds. And then after that, we wait two more seconds. So what I mean by this is that when you send a while, yes, indeed, we only have to worry about executing this task one at a time. That is great because it makes our code easy, but it has a disadvantage that you cannot expect a constant interval between the executions of this job. That is something that we can fix with a timer. Let's see that. Let's come here. Let me come here to the Solution Explorer. Let me actually close this, by the way. Let me close this. And now let's come here to the Solution Explorer. I want to create a new class. So class, background job with timer. Now let's do basically the same, but using a timer. And let's see that. We're going to have, yes, we're going to have the interval thing being fixed. We're going to execute the task at a constant interval, but we're going to be dealing with a multi-threaded environment. Let's see that. Let's come here. Let's say here, private async void execute task object state. Now I need my field. So I'll say private in instances being executed. We're going to start at zero. Then after that, we're going to come here and as I just mentioned, we're going to be dealing with a multi-threaded environment and therefore I cannot just edit this variable that is going to be common 
between different threads. I have to use interlocked. So let's come here and let me use interlocked. So interlocked at ref instances. What interlocked does is that it allows me to modify this variable and avoid a race condition. All right. So let me put here console write line timer starting execution that's been executed, instance being executed. We're going to write on the console how many instances we have. Again, we're going to simulate a long task, so await as delay, 10 seconds. Let me put here console write line timer, the current time, executing the background job. And then after that, again, we're going to use interlocked, interlocked at ref instances being executed, and we're going to subtract one. All right, so this is great. Now, let me put here an instance of a timer. So private timer, timer, timer equal to new timer. And we're going to pass execute task, no state, no do time. So time span zero. And we're going to use an interval of two seconds from seconds to. All right, so, and now let's say here, return task, completed task. Since that we have a problem here because this is hiding an implementation, so I'll just say custom task and let me say here custom task. All right, this is great. Now, just for good practice, since this is an irresponsible type, I'll use dispose here. Public override void dispose, timer dispose, and base dispose. All right. So now let's use this background job with timer here. Let's come here and let's put this here. Now, let's see what we got. Control F5. To run our application, let's look for our console here. All right, so here we have task being executed one, task being executed two, three, four, five. As you can see, we have several instances of our algorithm being executed at the same time. And you can see that we have five, six, 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 and only six. But there is something that I want you to see, and that is that we are executing our algorithm at a constant interval, for example, 2057, 2059, 2101, 2103. As you can see, the advantage of using the timer is that we can make sure that we're always going to be executing our algorithm at a constant interval. The disadvantage is that we have to deal with a multi-threaded environment, which has its perks. For example, that we can just add one or subtract one from a field, but we have to use interlocked. In the case of a while, the while implementation, I don't have to worry about a multi-threaded environment, but I don't have a constant interval between the executions of my job. That may be important for your business or it may not. That is something that you have to analyze. But in this video, we saw the difference between those two implementations. If you want to learn more about SP.NET Core, buy my Udemy course today. I have a course on minimal APIs with .NET 8. And also I have courses on C Sharp, and if you want to learn more about dealing with multi-thread environment, what we did with that interlock class, buy my Introduction to Concurrency in c -Sharp course. Link with a discount to all of my courses in the description of this video. Thank you.